Donald Trump sat down for an interview with Judge Deneen Pirro over the weekend, and he once again casually threatened to do violence against U.S. citizens. And this is basically becoming a common phenomenon with him. But nonetheless, I don't think that we should normalize this or become accustomed to it. Whenever the president threatens U.S. citizens and threatens to do violence against U.S. citizens, we should be outraged over this because the president is supposed to protect us, not harm us if we do something that he doesn't like. Um, so take a look at what he says here because basically he threatens to crush protests in the event people take to the streets and they don't like the results of uh, the election come November. So you talked about election night. I want to talk about election night also, but it brings me to the issue of law and order. Uh, and, and you, when you ran in 2016, you were the law and order candidate. It's almost prescient to think that four years later, that is that one of the main issues. So uh, we've got this anarchy going on in the streets. We've got towns in, uh, run by uh, and, and states run by Democrat governors and mayors who are refusing to allow the National Guard to come in. There are people in those cities and states who want order to come in, but you can't go in unless they request your help. That's right. Every problem. What are you going to do? Let's say there are there are threats. They say that they're going to threaten riots if they lose on election night. Assuming we get a a, an ele a, a winner on election night, what are you going to do? We'll put them down very quickly How are you if they do, do that? that. We have the right to do that. We have the power to do that if we want. Look. It's called insurrection. We just insurrection. send in and we, we do it very easy. I mean, it's very easy. I'd rather not do that because there's no reason for it. But if we had to, we'd do that and put it down within minutes. Within minutes. Uh, Minneapolis, they were having problems. We sent in the National Guard within a half an hour. That was the end of the problem. It all went away. Kenosha. Uh, you look at Kenosha, look at the problems they had. In fact, the sheriffs there, the police chief, they're all on my side 100%. Now, first of all, I don't know what threats Judge Jeanine Pirro is referring to when she talks about people who are saying they're going to riot if Joe Biden loses. Like most of the people currently in the streets, if you ask them, I bet don't actually feel very enthusiastic about Joe Biden. So I don't know where these supposed threats are coming from, but I think that a lot of this is just fear mongering from the far right. So regardless, like in this hypothetical situation, if Donald Trump wins, will there be protests? I mean, I'm sure that there will be you know, in some form. I don't think anyone is threatening to riot as far as I know, but there was the Women's March when Trump was sworn in. There were people who were protesting because they didn't like that a fascist was elected. And I think that, you know, if you feel some sense of outrage or, you know, you're uncomfortable at the fact of a fascist occupying the highest level of government, then you're a reasonable person. But what they say about what they do to protesters or rioters in this instance is what should really concern everyone. Trump basically says, um, you know, we would uh, put him down very quickly. That's exactly what he says. Put him down very quickly. We have the right to do that. We have the power to do that, quote, if we won. Now, that's really interesting to me because you're already the president. It's not like you'd get some new power if you're reelected. You're the president currently. So what he's tacitly admitting here is that if he is reelected, he's going to become even more authoritarian because he's unrestrained. Now, he has to worry a little bit about what he does and how his actions are perceived because if he fucks up, he could lose. Joe Biden could win. And in fact, Joe Biden is on track to win currently, so he can't do too much, can't get too authoritarian. But when he says, oh, we have the power to do that if we won, that tells us that, oh, okay, so he's going to get much more authoritarian. He's going to put down the protests like that. And he boasts about him having the power to do that. He even says it's called insurrection. So he's once again threatening to use the Insurrection Act. And what he also says, which should uh, startle a lot of people who worry about the country, law enforcement all over the country is on my side. Now, you can say Donald Trump thinks that everyone loves him, but I think he's largely correct about that. We have a lot of people in police departments who are far right. Just last week, we published a, you know, a video about how white supremacists are infiltrating police departments across the country. And the FBI has been warning about this for over a decade and nobody's taking any action. So I do think that, you know, by and large, police departments do side with Republicans and Donald Trump. So for him to say this, what he's telling us is that he has the legitimacy to act in a way that may be violent or unconstitutional. Um, now, in this next clip that I'm going to show you, he kind of walks back, you know, saying he's going to use the uh, the Insurrection Act, even if he explicitly cited it there. But Judge Jeanine Pirro is going to kind of press him a little bit and I guess encourage him in a way 
to use the Insurrection Act already because, you know, currently you have to wait until governors give you permission to send in the U.S. military. Now, he wasn't doing this. He was just sending his goons to occupy Portland. But, you know, now he's saying, well, I have to wait for their permission. And Judge Nene Pirro is saying, why do you have to wait? Just just do it now. Now you're waiting to be asked in. When does that, when is that change? When do so, you cross the Rubicon? Well, in Kenosha, they asked me in. Right. And we did a job like nobody's ever seen before. But if they don't ask you in, there are American people who want to. Unless you do insurrection, in which case it's just not big enough for insurrection. You won't do insurrection before no, election You don't day. need it. You don't know. Not yet. Oh, I'd be willing to do it in a heartbeat if you needed it, but we don't need it. Our National when Guard. When do you need it? Our National Guard is so good and so tough. But they've and by the way, asked. police departments in places that we're talking about, Seattle, we were going into Seattle, and they solved the problem the night before we got there. Yeah, we were getting ready to there. go. They heard we were going in. Do you hear Ted Wheeler's numbers? They're like 20% in uh, Portland. Ted Wheeler's a disaster. He's right. a laughing stock. He went out to protest with the so-called agitators, and they were going to destroy him. They were going to beat him up badly. He fortunately had security, but they were going to oh. beat him up badly. The man is a disaster. If he would say, come into Portland, within a half an hour, the whole thing would be But solved. he's not going to say that. Uh, the governor's gotten closer. Look what's going on out there. That's I will tell Kate you, Brown, the that? governor has gotten closer. I spoke to the governor two days ago. Good. They're arresting a lot of people. Good. Now, we sent in the U.S. Marshals for the killer, the man that killed the young man in the street. Just right. shot him. I mean, it was yeah, untelling. Cold just cold-blooded killed him. He didn't like his hat or he didn't yeah. like something, and it wasn't a Trump hat. Right. It was peaceful it was, prayer. It was a lot. It was a religious hat. Right. And he shot him cold blood. Two and a half days went by, and I put out, when are you going to go get him? And the U.S. Marshals went in to get him. Good. And in a short period of time, they ended in a gunfight. This guy was a violent criminal. A lot of them out there. And the U.S. Marshals killed him. Now, we need more details, certainly, but... What he's basically bragging about there is the U.S. Marshals killing someone, not giving that individual due process. The person who allegedly shot the far-right protester from the uh, prayer group or whatever it is in Portland, um, one of the militia members that was there to antagonize the Black Lives Matter protesters. There was a shootout and one of them were killed. Now, the person who allegedly pulled the trigger on that far-right person, he was assassinated. Now, again, we don't necessarily know if the U.S. Marshals attempted to apprehend him and he tried to fire at them. So they got in a gunfight, which ended in, in him dying. But it kind of sounds like Donald Trump is alluding to the fact that we were just going to go in and assassinate him, period. We're going to go get him. Like the, the language that he's using here really flippantly leads me to believe that the goal here was to just kill this dude who's a U.S. citizen who you can't kill. Every U.S. citizen is guaranteed due process but in donald trump's america where supposedly law and order is something that we uh we believe in we're just killing u.s citizens now because we know he's bad if he shot that far-right protester we don't know if self-defense came into play we only consider whether or not self-defense was warranted if you know it's a far-right figure like kyle rittenhouse but i mean nonetheless we don't know the details but we sent in u.s marshals is what he says and they killed a u.s citizen this is terrifying now, he's not the first president to extrajudicially murder a U.S. citizen. Obama did this as well. But that doesn't make it right. And every time a president does this, we should all unequivocally denounce it, regardless if it's a Democrat or a Republican, because U.S. citizens have constitutional rights. U.S. citizens don't just get executed by U.S. marshals or the U.S. government if they don't like that individual. You arrest them. You uh, try that person. And you uh, administer justice that way. You don't just choose to kill them if you don't like them. And the fact that he's talking about this as if the U.S. Marshals just went in and assassinated him, that should disturb everyone. But the fact that it doesn't shows you what we've been willing to accept in this country. Like, this is such a normal thing with Donald Trump where he threatens violence and, you know, just talks about crushing these protests and now is talking about assassinating someone that we just kind of accept it. It's a normal thing. We've just come to expect violence from the U.S. government against us. And once, you know, citizens start to accept that as a thing that's legitimate, then the country just devolves into chaos. Now, throughout the entire clip there, he was talking about 
how uh, good and tough the National Guard is. Now, he says he won't use the Insurrection Act, so he kind of contradicted himself there. Uh, because he says that, you know, these protests just aren't big enough currently to warrant that. But nonetheless, if we wanted to, we can crush these protests like that. Now, throughout that entire conversation, they were talking about what they could do to crush the protests. But not once was there any consideration to maybe meet with the protesters. Talk with someone who is one of the leaders of the protests or someone who represents the protests and address their concerns. Like, that is something that isn't even part of the equation. When we see these protests, the only thing that we think about is how to crush them, not to actually address their concerns, consider whether or not there's a legitimate reason for people to be protesting. We just think of ways to crush them. That's where we're at in America. Now, in a different country, if protests were going on for months, usually we would see if that government is functioning the government respond with legislation or policies, but has Donald Trump proposed any policy solutions to get the protests to stop? Has he signed any executive orders that would appease the protesters? No, because to him, he doesn't care why they're protesting. He just wants it to stop. And there's uh, only one way to get them to stop if you aren't going to try to respond to their needs legislatively. You use force, you use violence against them so i mean this is disturbing the fact that the president just casually threatens violence against u.s citizens semi-regularly like we shouldn't become accustomed to this and accept this it's unacceptable this is disgusting it's morally reprehensible and as u.s citizens we are entitled to due process we have constitutional rights so i mean if you truly do care about law and order then if you support donald trump you're an idiot you don't care about law and order because he showed us that he has no regard for the rule of law or the Constitution. And it's despicable. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher. <laughs>